The Megalomaniacs by Host Eric. Chapter 1 Orwin went to the beach on this day to test his illegal drug on unsuspecting beachgoers. Sometimes the drug worked and had intriguing results, but more often it failed and killed the person on whom it was tested. So Arwen clothed himself for anonymity in the uniform of the modern criminal, tan pants, a blue shirt and sunglasses, a pair of snappy brown loafers, and a gray digital wristwatch. No hat, though. That was for people who robbed liquor stores. Arwen had with him his assistant, Paul. Arwen had little affection for the man, and even less respect. As the two men sat in the car in the parking lot of the beach, Arwen reflected on the many, many reasons to dislike Paul. The man oozed a seamy self-absorption. He believed in nothing, not even science, and he actually seemed to enjoy killing people. Arwen himself was a scientist. Unlike his debased assistant, he basked in the beatific righteousness of science. Arwen understood the significance and finality of death. He respected that his subjects had sacrificed themselves for the god of science, and he honored their memories with his positive regard. Today, the two men selected their subjects quickly. They wrote down the license plate number of each in case either proved a success. If the drug did work on other subject, that subject would be tracked down for further study in an effort to understand what factors had contributed to the drug's success. Arwen, Paul's, and Arwen's Paul and Arwen's other assistant, Arwen, Paul, and Arwen's other assistant, Julie, still had no clear idea of why the drug worked on some people while it failed so violently on others. There were a number of possibilities. People most, perhaps most people had a strong allergic reaction to the compound, or perhaps the drug looked for a specific genetic marker that most people lacked. Hard to say with such a limited pool of data. But Arwen favored the latter theory, just on instinct. The two men followed their respective subjects from their cars onto the beach. Arwen had chosen a lithe, stringy-haired woman. Paul, a middle-aged man with gray hair and a healthy gut. Seagulls made their noises overhead. Children laughed and shouted at their friends. Families and teenagers made camp with towels and coolers all up and down the beach. Small waves rolled onto the sand. Flies and seaweed piled up in places. Orwin took in the scene blandly, then looked at his watch. He liked to time these things carefully. The thick gray digital watches that each man wore was utilitarian as well as fashionable. The timing didn't matter much in terms of the science. The experiment in this regard was quite straightforward. Stick somebody full of drug and see what happens. But the timing helped in keeping the whole thing well structured. These little tests generated quite a bit of agitation, what with the hideous death and all. So it was nice if both men injected at the same time. It just made the logistics of the subsequent escape a little easier to manage. So they set their watch timers for 15 minutes. Paul made some offensive comments that irritated Arwen. This will be like hunting pandas in the zoo. I can't wait to shoot my victim full of chemical death. Paul chided Arwen with more patience than he actually felt. We may very well succeed. One or perhaps even both of these people may survive. And I think that it's only decent of us to hope that they do. That is, after all, what this experiment is all about. Beep! The two watches started their countdown simultaneously, and the two men went off in opposite directions. Orwin roamed about the sand, looking at the people, killing time. He felt the smooth metal of the injection device in his hand. It was inconspicuous, a tan strap wrapped around the top of the hand, holding the injector in the palm. The trigger released into the body of the device. He could easily reach the little red button with his thumb, but there was little chance of pushing it accidentally. Beep! Ten minutes ago. Arwen shuffled across the sand and glanced over to where his test subject, the stringy-haired woman, sat. She was fairly thin, a little bony, actually. Smallish, round breasts, a two-piece bathing suit, maybe 25 years old. As always, Arwen looked for some trait of the woman's that might indicate the drug's success or failure. Arwen knew it was futile, but he couldn't help but look for commonalities anyway. He kept hoping that something obvious would hit him, and he'd figure out exactly what the drug cued on. Very unlikely, Arwen knew, considering the small amount of data he had to work with. Arwen looked across the sand to where Paul creeped about, relishing this business and looking suspicious. Arwen often could barely resist the urge to inject the man with the drug. He'd be far more useful as a test subject than as, than as an assistant. He had contributed somewhat in the development phase, but 
Arwen figured that at this point, Paul had just about exhausted his usefulness. Beep. Five minutes. Arwen took a deep breath and positioned himself about twenty feet from the girl. He squinted to watch Paul. Paul squatted down beside the man and busied himself with the sand around his feet. Paul's gray-haired subject glanced over at him once, but apparently thought nothing of the man crouching next to him. Perhaps he had dropped a coin or was grabbing a shell. Three minutes. Two minutes. Paul stood now, looking across the sand at Arwen as Arwen looked at him. One minute. Arwen smiled as the heaviness of science settled into the air like impending weather. Beep! Arwen squinted across the sand and watched Paul lean over the gray-haired man's shoulder as if asking him about his book. Arwen saw the head man's head jerk up in indignation, and for a few seconds there was no sign of anything more. Success or failure? Arwen waited for the judgment of science to be leveled upon the subject. He watched Paul back away from the man. The pause lengthened. Then Arwen saw the man's shoulder start shaking. Arwen watched him passively. Apparently, science had deemed the man unfit. The shaking went from the man's shoulders to his chest and stomach. The man tried to stand, but his legs gave way. He fell to the ground, and the shaking gave way to a quick characteristic quivering. The man's whole body began an eerie, rhythmic undulation. Arwen was too far to see it for himself, but he knew that spit and mucus were pouring from the man's mouth. And he also knew that the man's bowels and bladder were emptying. He knew that the man would be screaming horribly had his lungs and throat not been too inundated with fluid to allow it. Paul was twenty feet away from the man now, walking purposefully towards Arwen, not looking back. Behind him, a crowd of people gathered around the dying man. Beachgoers backed away from their towels and coolers. A few mothers frantically called the names of their children. Arwen heard other indistinct shouts across the distance. He made out the words, Quivering Death, above the rising din. By the time the crowd's mood shifted from curiosity to panic, Arwen knew the test subject was dead. Paul stared hard at Arwen as he neared him. Arwen should long since hit the girl and moved in, moving towards the stairs. Paul pointed to the girl and mouthed, Do it! Arwen didn't typically freeze like this. He had allowed himself to get caught watching the fascinating science that Paul had just performed. He chided himself for the indulgence. Paul was five feet from him in a flash. Like an odd, unexpected high tide, a throng of terrified people behind Paul moved across the sand toward the stairs. The sight of them preceded the sound of their shouts by a few seconds. In those few seconds, Arwen watched the people and heard only seagulls and waves. Paul smacked Arwen on the shoulder. Do it! What are you waiting for? The smack knocked loose most of whatever strange mood had overcome Arwen. He glanced at the group of women among which his stringy-haired test subject sat. None of them seemed yet to notice the commotion. He hadn't quite reached this part of the beach yet. Arwen walked over to the woman with the stringy hair. He tapped her on the shoulder. She looked up at him, smiling, unsuspecting. Her friends began to hear the commotion and noticed the crowd moving towards them. But none of them seemed to notice Arwen. This close, Arwen saw that the girl was quite pretty. She smelled of salt water and sun lotion. Yes, she said to Arwen. Science thanks you for your participation, Arwen told her. He pushed the injector tube against her shoulder and pushed the little red recess button with his thumb. He heard the loud hiss and saw the woman's head jerk back. He should have turned and run, but once again, his curiosity got the better of him. He backed away instead. The woman looked startled. She furrowed her brow a bit and opened her mouth as if to speak to Arwen. Arwen waited. He could hear his own breathing clearly. It sounded strange against the ever louder sounds of panic. The crowd was almost upon him. Arwen glanced at Paul. Paul shook his head and turned and ran. Arwen looked back at the woman. Still no sign of change. And then he saw it. The shimmering in the air around the woman. It was sort of wavy muddiness. The woman took great gasps of air. Her face conveyed shock but no fear. Soon the shimmering sh shrouded her from head to toe. It expanded with each breath she took. It contracted with each exhalation and looking increasingly like a fog bank around the girl. Success! Arwen shouted, oblivious to his surroundings. He felt the sort of elation that he figured a father felt at the birth of his child. Completely forgetting himself, Arwen walked towards the woman, to touch her face or simply to relish in the triumph of science, the triumph of his drug. Abruptly, Arwen was shoved to the ground from behind. The first of the panicked throng had reached him and the woman. His senses came back to him in a rush. He scrambled to his feet and saw the woman raise her arms above her shoulders. Arwen watched her take a final, long, slow breath and then turned to run. 
The shimmering shot out from the woman like a fog blown away by a stiff wind. Arwen blinked, and he was in the water. All around him, stunned beachgoers flailed about in the ocean. Five feet from him, a middle-aged woman surfaced, sputtering and coughing, wide-eyed with terror. Arwen grinned maniacally at her. He dog-paddled to keep his head above water and looked around until his eyes landed on the stringy-haired woman some hundred feet away, lowering her arms. Piles of clothing surrounded the woman, but there was no sign of the panicked crowd that had been seconds away from overwhelming her. Arwen splashed the water and laughed at his success. He watched the stringy-haired woman turn and run from the beach, up the stairs and out of sight. It was then that Arwen noticed that he was naked. All of the people around him were. It seems the woman's trick hadn't worked on their clothing. Arwen laughed harder. A second later, he realized that he no longer had the injector either, and abruptly his laughter stopped.